Hello everyone, this is Martha Ring Hedgehog with my May 2015 reading wrap-up. <clears throat> um, in total, I read 13 books in May and only DNF'd one. Um, it's actually funny because one of my followers, I can't remember which one, predicted that I would read nine books this month. And she would have been right, except I decided to speed read through one series, as you'll see. But, um, yeah, good, good guess, because it would have been nine books. So anyway, I'm just gonna jump straight into this. Uh, it was a pretty crazy month, and I read a lot of really good books. So the first book I read was Tunnel Vision by Susan Adrian. I gave this four out of five stars, and it follows the story of a boy named Jake. Yes, I'm cheating. I had to look at the cover because I couldn't remember. A boy named Jake who has this power that when he touches an object that belongs to someone, a really important object, he is able to tunnel into them, which means he can, he kind of inhabits them, he can feel their emotions, he knows what he, they're thinking, he can tell where they are. And he was sworn to secrecy by his father who worked for the government to never tell anyone about this, but then Jake ends up doing this as a show-off at a slumber party where a girl that he likes is at. And a secret, uh, branch of the government ends up finding out and wants to use him to help find terrorists and hostages and people like that. But Jake ends, um, ends up finding out that they're not entirely everything that they say, that they want more than just that out of him, and that they're essentially slowly taking over his life, and that there's also other people out there who would like to kidnap him and use this gift for less good reasons. Um, this book was a huge surprise read for me. I remember when I found out about it and I was kind of like, oh, that sounds interesting. I bought it. But when it came in, I was kind of like, I'm not sure this is going to be any good. The cover art is <clears throat> extremely uninspiring. I started reading it. I wasn't really in the mood when I started it and was not all that thrilled. But the further I got into it, the more and more I ended up liking it and like I said, this book ended up being a four out of five strawberry read. It was intense. It was gruesome. It was dark. It never let up. It was very fascinating, and you got very attached to the characters, and I was just, this was a very surprising read. I would highly recommend it to anyone who's looking for an action suspense type novel. It was really good. My only complaint is the ending was very abrupt, and it was very open, but not necessarily in a way I like, so the ending was a little meh, but it still worked, and overall, I really like this book, so four out of five strawberries for Tunnel Vision. After that, I immediately picked up Rook by Sharon Cameron, because I was going to the launch party for this in Nashville, you've probably heard. I'm sorry my video has not been up about, up about it yet, I promise I will get around to doing it, I've just been really busy, because I'm going to New York, Probably by the time this video is uploaded, I will be on my plane. Um, <clears throat> this was also... No, this was a 5 out of 5 strawberry read. I'm a little biased. I do like Sharon Cameron's books a lot. But, so this takes place 700 years in the future in France. And the, the poles have shifted and it caused pretty much everything to go hell in a handbasket. Um... Technology failed, everything has changed as we knew it, and so it is 700 years after this, we have gone back to kind of a 1700s style living. Um, the way life used to be, like, the way we live now has become myth, and people don't remember anything about, you know, what technology was used for. They don't know what CDs are, they don't know what action figures are, they have all these crazy ideas about what they might be, and they're considered artifacts because a lot of information was lost during this time, and things have just gone <clears throat> completely insane. And another French Revolution is underway, and aristocrats are being executed because they are wanting to fund inventors to bring back technology, and everyone believes that technology is the reason that the world collapsed, essentially. But someone named the Red Rook has been rescuing people, uh, aristocrats, from prison, and only the only person who knows who this person, who the Red Rook really is, is Sophia Bellamy. You can probably guess why she knows. She's on the eve of her uh, engagement because her family is about to lose all, lose their land, their fortune, everything, and in order to secure it, she has to marry 
a very rich person, but as she, when she meets her fiancé, she suddenly starts figuring out that he is not all he seems, which is very fitting, of course, because she isn't either. Intensely loved this book. Like I said, I'm pretty sure I gave it 5 out of 5. Out of five. Might have given it 4 out of 5, but I'm pretty sure it's 5 out of 5. Um, <clears throat> once again, Sharon Cameron has created this all these different characters, side characters, main characters. They're just bursting with personality. Her world is fascinating. I mean, this this has a lot of world building in it, which some people didn't like because it kind of led to a slower uh, pace, but I liked it. I really liked it. The world is just really fascinating. <clears throat> um, and there is also a lot of uh, historical uh, accuracy in this. Like, the friend, she did a lot of research on the French Revolution to write this other French Revolution because the whole story operates on the basis that history repeats itself. And just, there was a lot of detail and stuff that goes into this. I don't read a lot of historical fiction novels, so I really appreciated that. And I loved the cat and mouse game that's going on in this, and like, you didn't know who you could trust. You wanted to trust these people, but you weren't sure you could. And there was a lot of backstabbing and double dealing going on, and the romance in this was wonderful. I loved the romance. Um, there's a little bit of humor, but it's also very dark and still very gruesome and stuff, and I just... I loved it. It was so, so, so good. Um, <clears throat> so I would recommend this to anyone who loves historical fiction, anyone who likes The Scarlet Pimpernel, because this is kind of a retelling. It's more like a nod to The Scarlet Pimpernel, but it is kind of a retelling. Um, and also anyone who likes unique, futuristic type stories. Five out of five strawberries. This was amazing. Oof. After that... <clears throat> I picked up The Ark of Beastly Bones by William Ritter, the second book in the Jacoby series. Gave this 5 out of 5 strawberries, of course. This picks up where Jacoby left off. Abigail Rook is still working as Jacoby's supernatural investigative assistant, and they are called to go investigate these dinosaur bones that have been found, but the bones are being stolen for some reason. And there's also some deadly shapeshifters in the area and murders and other things and craziness and if you read Jack B, you know things are just crazy and all over the place. Um, this was everything I expected it to be and more. I just still love Jacoby. I love Abigail. I love the humor and the writing style in this. I love Charlie. This has some new characters in it that were an absolute blast. Um, the plot in this was a little harder to follow because the author is finally setting up a master plot that's going to start bleeding into, I'm thinking, the next book in the book after that. So we're getting a hint of a Moriarty of, of the Jacoby world, I guess you could say. Um, <clears throat> so you had that and plus the, the plot for this one going. And I, there were some surprises. It was really cool. And without giving anything away, I'm just going to say right now, I, I miss Jacoby's hat. I, it's hideous and awful, but I really miss his hat, and I hope he somehow gets a new one, because Jacoby without his hat is really sad. That was sad. Very sad. But yeah, so 5 out of 5 strawberries for this. Jacoby fans, you're gonna love this. Cannot wait. This comes out September 22nd, according to the back of this, so a review is early, but I can't wait to get my hands on a solid copy and reread it, because I totally will reread it. So 5 out of 5 strawberries for Beastly Bones, perfect sequel, cannot wait for the third one. <clears throat> After that, I read The Bitter Kingdom by Ray Carson, the third and final book in the Girl of Fire and Thorns trilogy, or The Bitter Kingdom trilogy, whichever you prefer. Um, this picks up right where the second one left off. I'm not really going to say too much about it because I would be giving things away, but essentially Elisa is now traveling her, making her way to the Invernos country, to destroy their power source, and a lot of crazy stuff happens. I gave this 4 out of 5 strawberries. It was a very good conclusion to the trilogy. I love the characters still. Storm actually became my favorite in this one, right next to Elisa and Hector. It was really nice seeing Elisa finally, at last, totally grown into herself and her powers, and just confident in doing what needs to be done. It was just really nice. She has grown so much as a character through this trilogy. I uh, love the romance between her and Hector, obviously. Um, <clears throat> and 
The only thing that I kind of was meh about is it's another journey through the desert. That's happened in the last two books, and reading about journeys through the desert does get a little old after a while. But for the most part, that was actually a very small part of this book. There were a lot of crazy su surprises and revelations. I'm still not entirely certain how I feel about the ending. It was not what I was expecting. I'll just say that. Um, but overall, a really good conclusion to the trilogy. I, I really love Ray Carson's books, so four out of five strawberries, you won't be disappointed. <clears throat> and after that, I picked up Mark of the Thief by Jennifer A. Nielsen, the first book in her Praetor War. I think it's going to be a trilogy as well. I gave this four out of five strawberries as well. This is historical fantasy, takes place in ancient Rome, and follows a Roman slave named Nick, who is in some Roman mines. And Nick has always tried to pretty much go unnoticed. He does what he's told, provided he agrees with the reasoning behind the orders. He won't obey, obey stupid orders. Um, <clears throat> but then he's ordered to go into a cave that has been discovered that holds Julius Caesar's ancient treasure, and Nick doesn't want to go in because the last slaves they sent in died, and he doesn't want to become another one of those slaves. But he's forced to go in there, and his mission is to find Julius Caesar's ancient bulla, which is supposed to have this curse on it and magic properties and things. Nick finds it, and he kind of accidentally ends up being endowed with its magical properties, and now he's suddenly become the most feared and hunted and most powerful slave in all of Rome. Jennifer E. Nielsen, it's great. She writes middle grade, technically her book's in middle grade. She does not let that hold her back from writing brutal stories where you really genuinely feel fear for the characters, even the main character, even though they're first person, so you know they can't die. You still really do fear for them. Um, she, it, this is another great adventure like the Ascendants trilogy. Nick is a more serious sage, and whereas Sage had the devil's own luck, Nick has no luck whatsoever. He can't trust anyone, he's being backstabbed constantly, he didn't ask for anything that's going on, and yet he's just suffering hell, and it just, this is non-stop action. It was, it was almost too fast in a lot of ways, like it just kept speeding and speeding, and you didn't have time to really process anything, and there were a lot of revelations, but it was still so good. Um, great, rich world and story and characters, I love the characters so much. Um, and it's just really cool reading an historical fantasy novel that takes place in Rome, because people don't usually write about the ancient world with magic. Um, I mean, they do like with the gods and stuff, but it's not done very often. So I really liked this, and four out of five strawberries, it was really, really, really good. <clears throat> Oops. After that, I finished The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells. My classic for the month, it took me a while to get through it just because I wasn't reading it in earnest, but I finally did. I gave it 5 out of 5 strawberries. It was really fun. Um, if any of you don't know what The Invisible Man is about, it's a classic, as I said, about this guy who discovers a way to make himself invisible, but being invisible kind of ends up corrupting him, and you see the slow progression of him going from just a thief to a violent person to a murderer. And it was just, it was really cool. <laughs> I really liked it. It was dark and creepy and, and just really awesome and fun. And I wasn't seeing, I did not see that ending coming. Um, so yeah, 5 out of 5 Strawberries for The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells. That was a really fun classic to read. <clears throat> After that, I tried to read more of Sydney Chambers in the Shadow of Death by James Runcie, the first book in the Grantchester series. I ended up uh, DNFing it, not finishing it. It's it's a great book. I really, really, really like it. It's awesome. Um, but this is a case of where I actually do like the TV series more, and I don't have much time to read this. I read enough of it to figure out that, you know, it's great. It, they're, they're awesome mysteries. They're fun. It's well written. Anyone who loves, like, you know, mystery, historical mystery type stuff will like this. Um, but it's kind of like a collection of short stories, and I'm just not in the mood for it, and I got other things I need to read. So I ended up not finishing it, but it is a good book. I just didn't finish it because I don't have the time to finish it. 
And then after that, I just wanted to read something really, really quick. So I read The Field Guide by Tony D. Tierlizzi and Holly Black, the first book in the Spiderwick Chronicles. In nugging it 5 out of 5 strawberries. <clears throat> um, not really reviewing it because there's not much to review. But essentially, it's about these three siblings who end up moving into the, the house of their great aunt, or is it their grandmother? I think it's their grandmother's house, the Spiderwick Estate. And... Jared ends up finding this book about, uh, it's a field guide to fairies and goblins and things like that that his great-great-uncle Arthur Spiderwick wrote, and he ends up finding out that fairies and goblins things are real, and now the fairies and goblins are after the Grace siblings because they want the field guide. Um, so yeah, it was just really fun. I never read this as a kid because for some reason I was like totally against it and I really don't know why because I would have loved it. Um, so I decided to read it and really enjoyed it. So, 5 out of 5 strawberries. <clears throat> and after that, I picked up what everyone's been talking about, An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. This is the book explosion book of the month for May, I believe it was. Um, and I actually picked it up because I wanted to, not because of that, and it was just coincidence that it worked out. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of people have been talking about this. It is a First book in a brand new, I think it's going to be a trilogy, but it might be more than a trilogy. I hope it's more than a trilogy because I'm tired of trilogies. Um, high fantasy, and I ended up giving it four out of five strawberries. It follows two protagonists. We have Elias Vichurius, who is in training to be a mask, which is an elite soldier of the Marshall's Empire. I think it's pronounced Marshall's. If it's not, please let me know. Um... <clears throat> And he is actually the son of the Commandant of Blackcliff, which is the training school. But uh, his mother doesn't really want him. And Elias doesn't really want to be a mask. He has plans of running away. But then on the day that he graduates, it, the, the augurs, I guess you could call them the priests of the Empire, decide that it is time to fulfill a prophecy that was long foretold about who will be the next emperor and he and three other recruits, including his best friend Helene, are picked to undergo trials to decide which one of them will be the Emperor and which one will be the Emperor's right hand, called the Blood Shrike, and which two will die. And then it follows another character, Leia, who is a scholar girl, which is a, I guess you could say it's the equivalent of the Greeks. Um, they are very scholar scholarly peoples, naturally, who were conquered by the Marshals, and her brother is taken by some martial soldiers one night, and so she goes to the rebel the rebels to get him back. Exchange for breaking him out, they want her to break into Gla break into Blackcliff and find out what she can about the trials for them. Um, and of course, she and Elias end up meeting, and they end up finding out their fates are intertwined, and lots of stuff happens. So this was kind of a complicated book for me to decide on because. I actually did not attach to any of the characters that much. I They worked for the story, but I didn't really attach to them. The romance kind of ruined it. If you want more detail on that, you can read my review. Um, but the world was really, really cool. I loved the plot. I loved how the world was based off kind of Roman, the Roman Empire. And this author is not afraid to be brutal. <laughs> I mean, it's a very brutal book. The, the main characters are not free of being permanently scarred, like, like, scarred and tortured and brutalized and actually you know they're, they're left marks and wounds and stuff they may be ugly by the end this is over because they go through so much crap um so she doesn't shy away from any of that it's very brutal and stuff and leia it gets hurt a lot and it, and it leaves marks um and the villain the commandant she is a woman elias's mother duh um, and she is one of the most terrifying villainesses I've ever read because she was very, 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 very convincing. So I loved the world and I loved the storyline and I liked the, 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 uh, uh, villain, but I didn't really attach to any of the protagonists. So four out of five strawberries. I, I, I liked it, but, but kind of, but there were things that bothered me about it, but overall it was really good. And after that, I decided to reread something. So I read Just Ella by Margaret Peterson Haddix, which is the first book in The Palace Chronicles. It is a retelling of Cinderella. Well, actually, it's kind of a uh, continuation. 
Cinderella has won Prince Charming, and this is about what happens afterward, what happens leading up to the wedding of this girl marrying this person that she doesn't know at all. Um, I gave it three out of five strawberries. I read this a long, long time ago. I wanted to reread it because the third book in the series recently came out and I need to refresh my memory. Um, I still like it. It's it's really fun. It has some uniqueness to it. Um, I forgot how much I loved Jed. He's really awesome. And Ella's really cool too. Um, but there was, there could have been a lot more to it. It was pretty quick. There wasn't, there was, no, I remembered a lot more happening in it quite honestly. <laughs> But not as, not as much happened in it as I would have liked. Uh, but it was a very interesting retelling, and I do look forward to reading the rest of the series. So three out of five strawberries. And then I read what... So that would have been nine books right there, um, I think, more or less. I don't feel like counting again. But then I liked The Field Guide so much that I decided to read the rest of the Spirit Chronicles. So I read book two, The Seeing Stone. Book three, Lucinda's Secret. Book four, The Ironwood Tree, and book five, The Wrath of Mulgarath. And these are each, like, under 200 pages. So I read them in a day, and this is what made me read 13 books total. Um, I gave them all five out of five strawberries. They were great. I would have loved them as a kid. This, the, the fifth one got a little dark. I was a little surprised, but I liked it. Um... And now I really want to rewatch the movie because when I watched the movie, I had not read these, and now I would like to now that I know what this how the story really goes, and just kind of compare them and stuff. So yes, those are all the books I read in May, um, and we'll see how much I get read in June because I will be in New York for part of that for a book con and stuff, and I will see you with my June to be read pile. Bye.